If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So we're going to do an example of where quotient languages can actually be really useful. So we showed that if we have a regular language and any language after that, then R slash L, so the quotient, is regular. And remember that the quotient is all the strings X, such that if we have some string in uh, the second language, the second one here, and the, their concatenation is in L1. So basically we're taking away any possible suffix, the end of the string, that is in the second language away and then keeping the first piece of the string. So let's do an example of this. So here we're going to uh, do an example which is based on uh, removing white space in some sense. But here, uh, instead of white space, we're going to remove a single character from all the strings on the end. So we're going to uh, uh, do something called remove trailing uh, zeros. And uh, what I'm going to call this language, so this is the format that uh, Professor Shallot uses in his book. So RTZ for remove trailing zeros is going to, of a language L, is going to be uh, all the strings uh, X in sigma star. But here we got to be a little bit careful because sigma, star, sigma has zeros in it. So this could imply that X is allowed to have zeros at the end. So uh, what we mean here is, or another way to interpret this, is we're going to um, uh, format it like this. So we can have anything at the beginning. We could have four, uh, zeros at the front, but we're not allowed to have zeros at the end. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take sigma, um, take away the character zero. So here this is saying um, any non-zero character can go there and before that anything can go there. So anything can appear at the beginning it's just that a zero can't appear at the end. And we're going to uh, union with uh, this with the empty string because we're because we can assume that the empty string has zeros removed on the on the end. So trailing here means at the end of the string. So like the suffix of the string doesn't have a zero in it. Um, but also uh, uh, note that we haven't used the language L here. So the way that we're going to get around this is we're going to say all the strings of this form such that there exists um, a string uh, zero to the i for some integer i such that x with those zeros at the end is in L. And that's the definition of the language. Why does this make sense? Because we enforce that the last character is not a zero. So that means that we're having the zeros taken off of the strings in the language L and then we're left with uh, the X part, and that's what we keep in. And you can just say, well, well, I'm going to only remove one zero and keep all the other zeros at the end. The key here is that we're enforcing that the strings X here have no uh, non-zero, um, uh, sorry, they only have a non-zero character at the end. Or they're, that they're the empty string, that's the other case. Okay, well... We can actually kind of see that this is um, closed for regular languages. So a nice result we can show is if L is regular, then we can show that removing the zeros is regular too. And why is this the case? Well, you can kind of see it because the language of exists a string such that um, the suffix of the string tacked onto that string is in L. That's basically what we just did with the quotient languages. So how can we actually do this here? Well, 
we can actually rephrase it in a different way. So rephrase the language R T Z of L in the following way. So R T Z of L is the language L uh, quotiented with zero star, the language of all strings that happen to have zeros. But we, uh, it turns out that we need to add back in all of the, all of the strings that are in this set right here. And I want you to put in the comments why you think that is. So in fact, we need to union this, uh, oh no, sorry, not union. It needs to be uh, intersected with. So uh, it's intersected with this. That was my mistake. So it needs to be sigma star, sigma, take away the zero, and then uh, union that with the empty string back in. Okay, so we're quotienting uh, all the strings that happen to have zeros at the end and have uh, this structure, which is exactly what this is saying. So all the strings that fit into here and there exists a string that um, such that this property holds. This is exactly the same thing here. We're taking away all, uh, we're taking away some number of zeros and the last character can't be a zero or the string is the empty set, uh, the empty string, sorry. And that's actually a quick proof because we know from what we did that this thing is regular uh, because L is regular. It doesn't matter what the second one is, although it is regular. Um, and this one over here is regular because sigma star is regular, sigma uh, take away character, this is a finite language, so it is regular. Concatenation of the two is regular, and then adding back in a, a finite set, which is also regular, so this is regular too. And because we have the intersection of two regular languages, what we get out of this is that this guy is regular. Cool. So it even you can actually um, do an example here, uh, and the main reason why is that the second language is in fact regular. So the process of actually making the DFA, because before we had trouble, uh, not trouble, but we couldn't figure out what the final states were if unless we knew the language in advance, what the strings were. But because we know that it's regular, it turns out that you can figure out exactly which states are gonna be final and then you can make the DFA for the first part and then make the DFA for the second part because you always could, and then just do the product construction for both of them. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your comments down below uh, if you have anything interesting about this or know any other things you can do with quotient languages. So hopefully that was interesting. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you wanna support the channel further. And as always, I'll see you next time.